In this video, I'm going to discuss an LCD panel that's available for the BeagleBone and demonstrate how you can work with it. In the follow-up video, I'm going to explain the full process of how you can set up a Qt or Qt toolchain, whichever you prefer, that can be used to cross-develop applications for the BeagleBone from your desktop computer. In this part, I'll show you how you can develop a very basic windowing application for the BeagleBone using the GTK, which is a multi-platform toolkit for creating graphical user interfaces. It works perfectly, but as you'll see, I don't set up a cross-development platform, and this is the reason that there is a second video. It's a second video because it's an entirely standalone setup and works with any LCD module, or even with the BeagleBone DVI cape, for example. If you're familiar with LCD screens and their use, then you can skip to the second video now. There I'll explain how to develop a one-click deploy setup for Qt applications using Qt Creator that has a full remote deployment and debugging capability. I build a full input-output application using an LED for output and an I2C base accelerometer for input data on a threaded timer. I also make the full source code available. In this, a shorter video, I'm going to discuss and demo the physical setup of my display and discuss the alternative route for developing GUI applications. So here is the LCD cape that I'm using. It comes from Circuit Co, who have developed a number of capes for the BeagleBone and they're widely available. This one is available for about $90 from UARC or from DigiKey. Circuit Co make three different LCD capes, a seven inch cape, a three inch cape, and this a 4 inch cape called LCD4. It uses a 4.3 inch New Haven NHD display that has a resolution of 480 by 272 pixels. It also has a built in 4 wire resistive touch screen. It has 5 user switches on the right hand side labelled left, right, up, down and enter. There is also a small reset and power button that are brought up from the BeagleBone and connected to the PWR underscore BUT and sys underscore n reset inputs on the BeagleBone's P9 header. The five buttons are connected to GPIO 116, 117, 119, 316 and 015 for left, right, up, down and enter. The resistive touchscreen is very easy to use but not as nice as the capacitive touchscreens that you're used to using on smartphones and tablets. You can use it with your fingertip or nail with pressure applied but I found that a nylon tipped stylus is really needed to get the best from the display. I stole one from one of my children's Nintendo DS's and it works great. The resistive touchscreen is connected to AIN0, AIN1, AIN2 and AIN3, so the first four analog inputs on the P9 header. So it uses up four of your eight analog inputs. One problem I had with this setup is that the remaining four inputs, A4 to A7, were available and worked fine. But I found that under my distribution of Angstrom Linux, the standard distribution that's available from the BeagleBone website, that when I used the GNOME desktop environment and tried to access the remaining four analog inputs, that the touch interface froze and could only be unfrozen through reboot. I've searched and the problem may be related to the touchscreen ADC subsystem that has to be configured as eight general purpose ADCs. This is called TSC ADC SS and it has to be used in one of four modes, either eight GP uh, general purpose ADCs, a four wire touchscreens with four ADCs, a four, five wire touchscreen with three ADCs, or an eight wire touchscreen. I think this requires modifications to the board am335xevm.c file and then a kernel rebuild, and I haven't had a chance to do this yet. So out of the box, you can either use the touchscreen or the analog inputs but not both at the same time. However, if anyone knows of an easier way, please let me know and I'll add it to the video description. At the worst case, you could use something like a multi-channel 12-bit SPI ADC. The display itself works well. Out of the box, you can see it here running the GNOME desktop environment. Here you can see the setup running XBMC and it demonstrates how clear the display is. The next step in the video is that I'm going to install the latest Angstrom distribution and boot the BeagleBone with the display attached for the first time. If you're familiar with installing the Angstrom distribution, then I recommend jumping to about 10 minutes into the video, where I'll start demoing some of the applications on the GNOME desktop environment. 
After that, I'll write a simple GTK application and compile it on the BeagleBone. Okay, so I need to download and install the system image for the BeagleBone that includes the LCD4 support. Um, you can see here that's accessible through the website for Circuit Co. It describes the screen itself. It's 480 by 272 pixels and has a four wire resistive touch screen. Um, okay, it's a 4.3 inch display. And it has five user switches on the sides, uh, as, you, as you can see. And um, there's full information there. There's, there's some inf information to follow, but the full information is there. So what I want to do now is I want to get further information and download the latest image. So um, I'm gonna use an angstrom image this case, in this, in this video. So intermediate beagle bone image releases can be downloaded from here. So I'm gonna to go to here. So these are the standard BeagleBone downloads that angstromdistribution.org demo BeagleBone. And the one that we're gonna download is the one that supports uh, the Cloud9 IDE and GNOME. So we need that version. And downloads directory, this is a blank image, so there's nothing here. Okay, that's downloaded. The next thing I have to do is uh, enable the SD card. I've placed the SD card in the adapter into my PC. So I just have to enable it for my VirtualBox installation. It's generic USB 2. And I already have a BeagleBone Angstrom distribution on this card. Okay, so it's coming up. Okay. So it's come up already. It's uh, slash DEV slash SDD1 is my beagle bone. And you can see it's popping up here to say that's my, my current distribution. So I'm gonna close that because I'm gonna write this new distribution to it. And so I've downloaded that. That's in my uh, downloads directory. And there I have my XZ file. So I need to get this onto my card. So the way we do this is sudo, minus s. Okay, so now I'm in my shell. Uh, so I want to xz dkc, these instructions are here on the website, they're at the bottom here, for the xz file, xz. My angstrom distribution uh, to slash slash dev slash and again this is very important I've mounted make sure you don't overwrite your hard drive or something like that this is where my media card is it's SDD so you make sure it's uh, your SDD okay and away we go so it's gonna take quite a while for it to actually copy across Okay, that's finished, so we can exit the root shell. And I'm just going to check my mount. Okay. So now I'm going to place this into the BeagleBone and boot the BeagleBone for the first time with this image. Okay, I'm gonna start this up. Okay, it takes a little while for it to boot. It should automatically log in. Okay, and I have to calibrate the touch screen. Oh, that didn't work too well. Anyway, it's clear I have a full running version of GNOME. I can, I can my touch screen isn't great. It's not very well set up, it's okay. Just a minute. Administration, calibrate touch screen. Try again, okay. 
Okay. Be fine now. Yeah. Okay. So it's much better now. So I can run. I go into graphics and I can. I can execute. The three D graphics application, the OpenGL applications. So it's clear here that that's working very well. There's obviously hardware three D acceleration going on there. Um, works very well. I thought I executed an application there. Maybe I didn't. Okay, eight point lights. Okay, so they're all working very well, and if you consider, I'm running this off USB power, which means that the the Beagle Bone is is throttled to I think it's 500 megahertz, so it means that it it could even run even better than this. Uh, so it's working very well. Um, I can connect to the network, I can I have full access to the network and so on. So this is a, a good start uh, if you want to build applications. And we can build applications directly here. I'll go through how we do that. Uh, we can start up a terminal. The keyboard's a little bit messy in that you have to use um, Universal Access Florence Virtual Keyboard. Unfortunately, it takes up much of the space on the screen. And we can see here H top for a second. So you can see where CPUs at well, when, when it's quiet, 6.8%, that's very good. And memory, 71 out of 248 meg. Uh, H top, okay, so that's quite neatly. There's nothing eating away. Um, Internet, or we can start up Firefox. Okay, so you can see the obviously the browser screen here isn't huge. It's fine. It works anyway. One of the downsides of the display, and any display for that matter, is that they use a lot of outputs on the P8 and P9 headers. The AM335X actually has either 284 or 325 pins in a BGA, depending on the package chosen. But the BeagleBone has only two headers of 46 pins broken out, and this is why we need the MUX. You can see here in the diagram that comes from the data sheet of the LCD4 just how many pins are actually used. Some of them can still be used such as the I2C pins as they are buses and in fact I use the I2C bus in the next video for connecting the accelerometer. However most cannot be used especially anything that mentions LCD in the title. Okay so that's clearly working. Um, the next thing we need to do is be able to connect to it. So uh, we need to work out its IP address. Uh, one way of doing that is to use nmap. So I can type nmap minus t4 minus f space 192. So I'm going to scan. I know that my DHCP goes from 100 to 256, uh, 255. So I can do nmap minus t4 minus f198.168.1.100 to 255. So that goes off and does a network map of my local network. Just takes a minute. And there it's come back with all of the devices that are available. Um, and the one that's most likely to be my beagle bone is this one here. You can see we've got port 3000 open, for that's for the... Um, the uh, cloud 9, port 80 for the web server, 22 for SSH and uh, 443 for HTTPS. So that means that the IP address of my BeagleBone and my network is .1.108. So we can just test that here. So we can SSH into 192.168.1.108 and we want to log in as root. 
Um, oh no, okay. Someone could be eavesdropping on you right now. I have to do something. SSH minus key gen minus F slash home slash meloidy slash dot SSH. Um, okay, and then I can log in again. I'm sure I want to continue. The password is root. Okay, so now I'm on my I'm on my BeagleBone, and I've got Linux BeagleBone 3.2.34, and we can see it's ARM v71 GNU Linux. Uh, so everything is working there, and we're ready to go. So the latest Angstrom distribution has a full tool chain installed on it. So this is my directory, so I'm just gonna make a directory here. And I'm going to write in a, a, the standard GTK example. So I'm just going to call this vi, uh, vi uh, test.cpt. Dress of arc C, dress of arc V, window equals GTK underscore window new. Top level. That's it. So I just want to make it so that a window appears on our Beagle Vault. Oops. No, it's working. Escape colon WQ. More test. Okay, so that, that's my, my short little application. Now one of the things about um, GTK and, and Glib is that there's a slightly strange configuration for compiling just check g plus plus is there okay that's good g plus plus and we have to do um a small um apostrophe but it's the backward apostrophe uh, pkg minus config minus minus libs minus minus c flags and um, glib and gtk plus minus 2.0 and the same backwards it's on the top left hand side of my keyboard and it's test.cpp test okay oh it could it would ha be handy if i could spell uh, bi test.cpp uh, a escape x x a i n C L U D E. Hopefully that's the only error. Okay, try it again. It's doing something. Good news. Right, so I've got my test application uh, and I don't think it's gonna work properly. Okay, GTK warning can't open display, cannot open display. Okay, so at this point I've compiled my application. My test application has become dot test. And I can execute this no problem by going into my root home. I can go to my folder in here, it's hard to see, that's my folder. And there's my test application. So I can double click that and it opens on the display. There are a couple of steps you have to take if you want to execute from the command line. Close that. 
Uh, so we might we would have to go applications, accessories, terminal, and we have to go applications, universal access, Florence keyboard, and we have to give access to localhost to open up um, a window on our session. So X host space. There's my plus shift plus localhost. Okay, hit return. So localhost was added to the access control list. I'll flip, I should start the keyboard again. Make sure it's down here. A little bit fiddly to work with. E X I T. Okay, so that's that closed. So that means now I'll leave this running there. I can go back over to my shell. And we have to do a couple other things. First of all, we have to export the display. EXPRT display equals colon 0, 0.0. Okay, that's it. And then we should just be able to say dot slash test. And when you press return, yep, yeah, it worked. You can see the window test appeared on my beagle bone and I can I can move it around. So that's the basis of how we can build a GTK application. I can I can kill it here by hitting control C and my application, my window dies uh, on my beagle bone. Um, the problem with this setup is that ideally you want to create a tool chain where you can work on a desktop PC and write the code once there and then transfer it over to your, your beagle bone. But it is very, very, very difficult to set up glib and GTK to work in a cross-compiler cross environment. Um, your best option there is to create a, a mirror image of the files and the libraries that are on the beagle bone on your local machine, and then use something like Eclipse from the videos from before to try and set up a cross-compilation environment. I've tried it. I found it very difficult, it didn't work very well. And I decided that instead of using GTK for these applications, I want actually applications that take advantage of the full screen. So for that reason, I'm going to move on and look at uh, QT or Qt, whichever way you want to pronounce it. And I'm going to do that in the next video.